All right, I'm super excited to make this video. It was one of the first ideas I had, and I finally got Sparky Platt. I have about 270 hours in Kovacs and 1800 hours in competitive FPS. I play Apex Legends. Just to give you a point of reference of my FPS background before hitting Platt. This video is going to be about giving back to the community. I've been learning a lot from the FPS Aim Trainer subreddit, from Sparky, from a lot of high level uh, GMs, and I see a void of teaching beginners how to improve properly. I learned the hard way just by repetition, running through the routines mindlessly without realizing I wasn't optimizing my progression. So I want this video to be a guide on how to practice effectively in order to hit Sparky Platt. But you can definitely use the information I'm going to cover for clients any ranks. What this video isn't going to be is how to approach the individual scenario types or the routines themselves. There's a lot of great examples of other great videos like Christmas is Cancelled. I'm not going to discuss any aim basics, how to get routines, playlists. I have another video talking about those things which you can click on the card on screen. This is going to assume you're around the silver gold rank and sparky benchmarks and you have the fundamentals of aiming and Kovacs down already and you have routines that you're using. Platt and Sparky isn't trivial. When you look on the FPS Aim Trainer subreddit, for example, or you hear people talking about it in the Sparky Discord or on Twitter, people say Platt is just the bare minimum and it's easy to get. I don't think that's the case. You see so many posts where people are like, I'm cracked after 50 hours in Kovacs. I'm an aim god after 100 hours or 150 hours. I don't think that's useful because people use that as their metric for determining whether or not they're getting better. A lot of people, they get discouraged because they've spent X amount of time aim training and they're not seeing the results that they think they should be seeing. You might be aim poor with 150 hours in Kovacs and you're still in bronze and you're asking yourself, how is this possible? What am I doing wrong? You might even be thinking you'll never get better and it's not worth it. That it's just genetics or you're too old, your reaction time is too slow, any number of things that you're telling yourself that's outside of your control. I've got good news for you. You're not alone and you can get better. You're probably just not training correctly and that's okay. We're going to fix that. So before I committed myself to really get Platt and Sparky, I was just occasionally running the Sparky benchmarks every month or so to see where I was at after doing my regular routine. And after talking with a friend who's Diamond, he suggested I just try grinding the benchmarks and I immediately started getting better scores. Duh. I mean, makes sense, right? Most likely, you need to be benchmarking more frequently than you are now and be deliberate about it. Eventually, I got into a rhythm of practicing normally throughout the week. And once a week, I would focus on a personal best or PB in a specific scenario. And normally, what I would do during the week is I would try running routines that are beneficial for the scenario type that I wanted to get a PB in. So for example, if I wanted to get a PB in Static Dots, I would use Christmas's Cancelled Flick experience experimental routine. Usually I would couple that with pure routine smoothness routines at the beginning. And then on my benchmarking days, I would try to play to my strengths on that specific day. For example, if you're nailing static dots and just getting better scores on that scenario every time, keep pushing that scenario and see how high you can get. If you're consistently getting within 5% of your current high score, you're probably able to beat it. Be willing to keep running the scenario at this point longer than you normally would to beat your current high score. Sometimes I would run a scenario 20 to 30 times on a given day. By the same token, you should take rests when you're stagnating on your scenarios or just getting reduced high scores over and over. It's something that you kind of learn to figure out about yourself because it's going to be unique to you. I've seen some GMs that will practice the same scenario for hours. I wouldn't really suggest that because I feel like that's kind of overtraining. You need time to heal and rest to maximize your gains. You definitely want to push yourself on occasion, but if you push yourself and do 150 pass through track invincible in a row multiple times a week, you're going to be overtraining and you're probably not going to get the results you want. So think of it like practicing for a test and then at the end of the week taking the test to see what your scores are. 
You want to create goals for yourself other than getting high scores, aim improvement goals. For example, if you have the habit of overshooting or undershooting targets, take 10 to 15 minutes or more without caring about your scores and just focus on that. I've always had problems where I can't make straight lines from target to target and static dots. So I'll spend a little time each day slowing down and just focusing purely on that technique. And I'm getting 20 to 30 percent worse in my high score, maybe even more. But that's not my goal right now to get a high score. My goal is to improve in that area of my aiming. You want to start optimizing your runs. You want to sort yourself out. Think about all the distractions that exist between you and your goals. In Kovacs settings, this is disabling the visual clutter like the weapon, the laser, hit markers, bullet decals, just the bare minimum information that you need. In your training environment, this might be cleaning up your desk, getting rid of noisy pets. Try to think about all of the things that cause you not to be able to focus deliberately on your training and either eliminate those distractions or minimize them. This is obvious, but in Kovacs itself, go for the easiest targets. Go for clusters of targets, for example. When you're shooting your current target and you're planning your shots for your next targets, go for the ones that are closest to your current target. The idea is to minimize waste and movement, just like you're eliminating waste in your distractions in your work environment and with your Kovac settings. Take advantage of the bot spawns. If the bots spawn from the same place every time, keep track of their starting position and be ready to shoot or start shooting before the bot spawns if you're not penalized for accuracy. If if bots have random starts, feel free to reset runs until you get a good start. I would assume that all people that are high in the leaderboards do this, so you should do it too. Get in the habit of restarting a run. It seems kind of counterintuitive, but I think it helps cement the idea that runs are discardable. Every run is an opportunity to get a high score. Sometimes you'll get terrible bot patterns, sometimes you'll get great patterns, but make mistakes. Just don't get too attached to any one run, no matter how far in you are. I think this helps with relieving pressure on yourself if you do have a good run and you start to think about it and be conscious of it. By the same token, be willing to stick with the run if you make mistakes early on, especially if the scenarios are long like air or ground plaza. So the plateauing. This is probably the most common questions I see in the aim training community. Why are my scores getting lower? Why am I plateauing? Why am I not improving? First off, what is a plateau? A plateau is essentially when you are not achieving the goals that you think you should be achieving and you are stagnating and not improving like you think you should be improving. Since our goal right now is to get high scores in the Sparky benchmarks, that could mean that, for example, if you're trying to get plat and one wall 6TS, which is 105 to get plat, and you're just getting 90 or 92 over and over again, day after day, week after week, that's a, that's a a plateau, right? And it's frustrating. And a lot of people experience this. They throw up their hands and they give up or they reach out to the community and they're like, what do I do? How do I get past this? So the number one reason why people plateau is because they're mechanically just repeating the same routine or the same scenario or just doing the same thing over and over again and just expecting to eventually get better. Like that saying, practice makes perfect. They think that they can just keep practicing and then they'll wake up one day and suddenly get better results. Like you know that meme where nice guys put kindness coins into women expecting sex to come out and I apologize if this is a brash analogy. Similarly it's like putting practice coins into Kovacs and expecting better scores to come out. You're not making practice an active engaged process. What helps me, I'm an engineer so I think about things empirically, it's kind of like troubleshooting. The scores are like a health score. It's giving you data that something's off. It's like having an irregular heartbeat. There's so many things that could be wrong. You don't exactly know what's going to be wrong, especially if you're not plat yet. You're not an aim coach. You have to go through the process of elimination to figure out what's wrong. If we're talking about troubleshooting a computer that won't turn on, for example, it could be because it's not plugged in. There's no power. It could be because the RAM needs to be reseated or the CPU's gone bad. The power switch is broken. There's so many different things that it could be and you just have to eliminate them one by one until you find the thing that works for you. Over time, you're going to get better at recognizing what you're doing wrong and you'll have to do less of the process of elimination. Because there's an infinite number of techniques you can use to get better and get past a plateau, I'm not going to go over every single one. There's going to be new things that'll get figured out in the 
future. Here are some of the common things that I've done to break through plateaus or just to get higher scores generically. The first one is to watch videos of how to do the scenarios. This seems obvious, but I overlooked it. I'm sure a lot of other people have. I started watching videos of GMs doing scenarios and I found at least two scenarios that I was doing completely wrong. Bounce 180 was one of them and I think Popcorn Sparky Invincible. GMs are great because they do the scenarios so much that they figured out how to run them optimally. So instead of going through that process yourself, you can just copy what they're doing to get better scores. You should try variations of the scenarios that you're plateauing on. One of the common things I recommend is to do Pokeball versions of the static dots, for example. Longer scenarios like Air and Thin Gauntlet, you can practice specific difficult bots. In Kovacs, they have a scenario for every bot type in a long run if you are specifically struggling with certain bots. Usually bots six, seven, and eight are the most difficult. So you can just focus on those. That way you don't get to the end of a good run and just choke on the hardest bots. Some people like doing harder versions of the scenario they want to PB in where the bots are smaller or faster or both. So when they go back to the regular scenario, they get better results. You could also try easy versions of the scenario like popcorn gooded, tracking invincible. They have the easy versions. If you're constantly struggling on the regular versions, or you could just reduce the time scale of the regular version if you're struggling. So how do you know if a scenario is too hard for you? This is going to be something you're going to have to figure out on your own. I would suggest kind of pushing yourself 10 to 20% in a specific scenario. Get outside your comfort zone a little bit. Outside of that, if you're really struggling, it's probably too hard for you and you can just work on the easy versions, but don't just do the easy versions or reduce the time scale over and over again without pushing yourself. You can also watch your VODs and see what mistakes you're making and how to improve them. One thing you'll notice is if you watch other people's videos, it's easier to point out what's going wrong and you need to do the same thing for yourself. It's night and day difference playing the routine and playing the scenarios versus watching them. And then consciously think about the things you've identified to fix and improve them while you're training. For static dots, something that helps me push speed is to use a metronome. One of the biggest problems people have, they'll get high accuracy in static dot scenarios. They'll get like 98% accuracy and then they feel like they can't get a higher score. Most likely the reason why they can't get the higher score is because they aren't shooting enough targets targets to cause more bots to spawn and get a higher score. So if you want to get 105 and one wall 6TS, you have 98% accuracy and getting 103, guess what? You're never going to get 105 at that speed. So you can use a metronome to set the BPM to something like 115 or 120, and then use that as a basis for figuring out how fast you should be clicking. You don't have to leave the metronome on the whole time. I don't, but it gives you a good point of reference and it pushes you to go faster. This is probably going to be the most controversial part of the video because there's still a growing consensus on this. You need to experiment with your FOV and your sends, and you need to be doing it more regularly than you probably are. There is a lot of Twitter posts and guides out there on fixing specific issues with your aiming, which suggests to temporarily change your FOV and sends to to address things like smoothness and speed. I would suggest not doing this temporarily, but to do it as a matter of course in your training. For example, you can use a lower sends on smooth tracking scenarios like Thin Gauntlet V2. That's what I did to break my high score that I couldn't break for weeks. As a general rule, a higher sends and a lower FOV is going to highlight your mechanical deficiencies. And by that, I mean, if you're using a high sends on smoothness scenarios and then switching back to lower sends, when you're doing the higher sends, you will see how jittery you are. And you could certainly do it for a couple weeks at the higher sends to help your smoothness and you probably will get results. But I think instead of seeing that as a temporary solution, it's a way to analyze shortcomings in your aim and isolate and improve on your problems. By the same token, you can adjust your FOV and sends 
to optimize your runs. For example, using a lower sends on a constant smooth tracking scenario like Thin Gauntlet V2. You might see this as cheating the system because technically you're making the scenario easier, but if you were playing an FPS game like Valorant, wouldn't you run it with a lower sends? It's mostly about crosshair placement and holding corners. There's very rarely going to be a time when you need a complete 180. Why would you run a high sends in that type of scenario? But if you're playing a game like Apex where you do need movement and close tracking skills to survive, you would want to use a higher sense. Most likely you're going to be doing 180s or more very frequently. What this does is it puts you in a mindset to be adept at using different parts of your arm and adjusting to different sensitivities depending on the FPS game. And it makes you a more complete aimer. Don't box yourself in by forcing to stay on one sense. You might think that this is critical to stay used to the same sensitivity, no matter what the game is, but my personal opinion is that you should get used to different FOVs and different sensitivities and see how it works for you. It might be uncomfortable at first, but part of aim improvement is putting yourself outside of your comfort zone. That includes using parts of your mouse pad you aren't used to. For example, if you get a long thin strafe, sometimes you get those random long thin strafes that go for 20 seconds in one direction. Try to track the bot the whole time without picking up your mouse. Obviously, you're eventually going to have to pick up your mouse. You'll find that there's parts of your wrist and parts of your arm that you aren't used to using and they'll be really jittery. Force yourself into those types of positions instead of resetting your mouse constantly. You're probably not developing parts of your arm and your wrist because you're specifically not getting outside of your comfort zone and you're resetting your mouse when it feels off. This might seem like you're doing the right thing and you're probably doing it unconsciously. You're actually hindering your progress by not developing it. Eventually you want to get to a point where you know what to fix in your aim improvement before the score is even shown. You don't want to use the score alone as a basis to know for what to continue working on. There's so many times I've had runs where as I'm doing the run, I can already tell what I'm doing wrong. You want to think about it as a slow and incremental improvement over time where every run you're consistently getting close to the same scores and then you're going to be raising the ceiling over time to become your new average. If your experience is that you have a really high score and you are nowhere close to it no matter how much you try, that's a good indicator to you that you aren't being deliberate about your improvement. You're not thinking actively about what you're doing wrong and trying to improve things that are holding Holding you back. The examples I gave before are just the tip of the iceberg. The point I want to drive home here is what makes the aiming field so exciting but simultaneously frustrating is outside of the core fundamentals there's no well established discipline on what it takes to improve. In some ways this is like cooking where there's some amount of experiments that are required to determine if you're getting positive outcome. With cooking that comes down to does it taste good? Well what does that mean scientifically and it's subjective. There's some amount of art to it and I think that's what trips people up who expect to be able to practice drills repetitively and just get better over time. So be empirical, have a theory on why you want to perform an experiment with the expectation of getting a certain outcome but be creative and be willing to test out different things. Ultimately, by deliberately focusing on continuous improvement, you will get better scores. I don't think any aim improvement video is complete without talking about mindset because it's basically the glue that holds together all of what I've talked about up until now. You have to want to improve and accept that any poor results, plateaus, and bad habits are in your control to work on and get better at. You need to decouple the act of improvement with the end result of practicing. In this case, the end result of your practicing is to get better scores in Sparky benchmarks. But improvement isn't just getting better scores. Improvement is getting better mouse feel and getting better at specific techniques, feeling more comfortable with parts of your mouse pad that you haven't been comfortable with before. Learn to become hyper-focused on how to increment 
incrementally improve your aim versus only looking at scores as your only measure of progress. It's nice to physically see yourself going through the ranks and beating your scores as a motivator, but you can't become emotionally invested in this end state alone or you're going to diminish your gains. For a long time, I thought I was Sparky Platt because I wasn't literally sitting down and documenting my scores and I realized I was silver or even less in some scenarios, but I wasn't Platt in any. You're only hurting yourself in the long run to get perceived social gains by incorrectly advertising your progress. It's just a Sparky rank. I'll end it there. As always, I hope this was useful to you. I spent a lot of time learning from the AIM community. So even if this is covered in a lot of videos or guides, I hope I was able to give you at least something that you can benefit from. Please like, subscribe, show your parents if you want to see more content from me in the future. I'll see you next time.